Whether you've already purchased one of our many wood stoves, or are only giving one or more strong consideration, we offer this short video to help you understand the critical points of installation, operation, and maintenance. Your safety and satisfaction come first. Regardless who installs your appliance, and we strongly recommend a certified professional installer, viewing this video will help you be able to more closely follow along as he does his job. By choosing to heat with wood, a green biomass fuel, you're saving your energy dollars and helping preserve our environment, particularly if you burn wood responsibly. When burned cleanly and efficiently, wood is carbon neutral and will not harm the planet, as does heating with fossil-based fuels. You can actually lower the greenhouse emissions by heating the wood in the proper manner. Always select the proper size stove for your application. Too large and you will burn it too low. Too small and you will be dissatisfied. For more detailed instructions accompanied by many helpful and informative illustrations, your installer and you must always follow the appropriate owner's manual. Download from www.usstove.com. Getting started. Site selection. Carefully plan your installation, keeping in mind the need for a chimney and proper clearances to combustibles. The ideal location is a spacious gathering point, perhaps a large family room, one conducive to efficient heat distribution to the rest of the home. Once you have your placement determined, make a detailed sketch of the area, including all measurements. Confirm with your installer and local officials to make sure all building codes are followed. You must obey those rulings. The ideal chimney is one that runs straight up from the stove through the center of the house and out the roof, with no elbows. The chimney, not the stove, is responsible for draft. The world's best stove is totally reliant on the chimney to which it is connected. Many products are on the market to help you, especially prefabricated chimneys, which can be easily installed or used to adapt an existing chimney or fireplace to a new wood stove. Okay. Now you are ready to proceed with a typical installation. Here's a list of items your installer will need to have close at hand to effect installation, including some items for the homeowner's use later. Your stove will come from the store, usually in a cardboard box, and frequently mounted on a small pallet. With help from an assistant, removing the carton, framework, and inner wrappers, safely disposing of the plastic bag, which must be kept from small children. It is easier to leave the stove mounted to the pallet, if one is present, for transport into the home with either a dolly or a small hand truck. Assuming you have proper floor and wall protection, move the stove adjacent to its predetermined location. Assemble any components or accessories to be installed. Remove the stove from its pallet or padding, and with a sheet of heavy cardboard underneath, lift and slide the stove onto the non-combustible surface. Remove the cardboard. Using the connector pipes purchased separately, make your temporary connection to the chimney. Careful to make proper alignment. Any horizontal run should have a rise upward towards the chimney of at least a quarter inch per horizontal foot. Once satisfied with all alignment and clearances, seal each joint with high temp silicone and secure with three self-tapping screws. You're now ready to build your first fire. But let's consider the fuel and proper burning procedures. The firewood you burn in your stove and how you burn it is necessary for your satisfaction, enjoyment, and helps your budget. Use only dry seasoned wood. Hardwood is usually preferred. It is heavier, denser, and offers more usable BTUs. Use softwood during those mild days in the fall and spring when less heat is desired. Emissions may be three times greater when burning unseasoned or wet wood. Be a good neighbor. Be green, heat clean. Wood should be split, preferably quartered, in order to present the greatest possible surface area to the fire. Firewood should be air dried for at least six months. Cover your properly stacked wood pile with a waterproof tarp, leaving sides open for air circulation. 
Split and set aside a good supply of kindling. You will regret not doing so later. Never build a too large fire as it is a wasteful, inefficient practice. Your noblest goal is to have no visible smoke leaving your chimney. Once the fire is well established, say after 30 minutes, observe your chimney outlet. If you see no smoke, your stove is operating both cleanly and efficiently. Take a bow. You're being green and heating clean. Starting a fire and adding fuel to a dying fire is an easy process. Place two small logs in parallel with each other, with space in between for your kindling fire. Crumple a few sheets of newspaper, or use log lighters, and place in the space between those logs. Build a stack of kindling atop the newspaper. Place several pieces of larger kindling on top, spanning the paper and initial kindling. Open the draft controls all the way. Light the newspaper. Once the kindling fire is established and the parallel logs are actively flaming, add a couple of smaller pieces of firewood. Once you have bright and active flames, close the feed door and check your chimney top. Add just enough wood to maintain your fire for longer periods, at the end of which you should have ample coals with which to start to rebuild your fire using only a few pieces of kindling. When you do rebuild your fire, take the time to remove some but never all ashes, leaving coals and unburned charcoal. Here are some no-nos. Never start or freshen a fire with flammable liquids. Do not leave a stove unattended while the feed door is open. Keep closed unless refueling. Do not burn waste materials, especially oily rags or flammable trash. Never leave an unattended child in the room with the heater in operation. Serious burns may result from contact with hot surfaces. Here are a few must-dos. Stove is very hot while in operation, especially at the front. Keep clothing and furniture at a safe distance. Wear heat and cut-resistant gloves while refueling, performing maintenance, and ash removal. Keep an operational and well-maintained smoke detector in the room in which the stove is installed, and one upstairs if yours is a second-story home. Keep a well-maintained fire extinguisher on hand, just in case. We sincerely hope this video has helped you. Much more information, including those owner's manuals, are available on our website, www.usstove.com. United States Stove Company, keeping Americans warm since 1869. Family owned, now in its fourth generation. And plant a tree every year. Future generations will be grateful for your stewardship of our precious natural resources.